Hello fellow YouTubers and welcome to another unboxing. This is the most probably anticipated unboxing of the year. This particular processor would be sitting somewhere between i5 and i7 CPU, priced uh, similarly to i5 if not cheaper and performing closer to i7. So it's very interesting and I would like to actually see the performance numbers and show you guys and share this information with you. So let's get started. First things first, um, this is the name, Intel Xeon uh, processor E3, so it's E3-1230. Now this particular is V2, so it's uh, Ivy Bridge, just like 3570K or 3770K. It, it was actually released on the very same uh, date, more or less, and has a very similar specification to an i7. And anyway, we're going to talk about the specification a little bit later. So the version 2 basically says that it's an Ivy Bridge, the first one was just E3-1230 and it was a Sandy Bridge. Performance difference is not that huge between the version 1 and version 2, however, if you have a LGA 1155 uh, Ivy Bridge compatible motherboard, might as well go with this one. Now if you have a 5 at the end, E3-1235, it actually includes um, onboard graphics, this one does not, however there are benefits um, to that as well. Um, which I'm going to talk about a bit later. In terms of the features, as you see there, main features is it supports um, ECC memory. Now this particular memory type allows you to basically um, use error correction on the RAM. So it's a bit slower RAM, however it produces uh, virtually no errors. So if you are working with something really important, you might as well go with that. So maybe rendering or working on the video production and also um, I don't see it here but it does have Intel V Pro technology. Um, what it does is basically you have additional security features and um, you can access your PC via network and things like that. Um, I'm not really aware of the full um, documentation of such however it's handy to have and for those of you looking for them it's in the package um, differently from E5 and E7. So the box as you see is pretty standard. Um, just going to mention some features before I show you the actual CPU chip which doesn't look anywhere different from I5, I7 or even I3 from outside. Um, so once again it was launched pretty much the same date as 3570 and 3770K. Um, the reason I got 3570K frankly was because I didn't really know that these chips existed. I looked at Xeon lineup before but they were very expensive chips but now they've gone down in price and for this particular one uh, the price is really good and now how is it different from i5 and i7? Well first things first, um, comparison with i5 this one has 8 threads so it has 4 cores and 8 threads. Um, so it's hyper-threaded CPU, um, 3570K for instance isn't uh, hyper-threaded where 3770K is. It is clocked a little bit slower, so 3570K you have 3.4 gigahertz and 3770K you have 3.5 gigahertz. Um, this one is 3.3, however you have a turbo boost that reaches 3.7 as in comparison to 3.8 and 3.9 on 3570K and 3770K. Another um, big thing is that this is not an overclockable um, unlocked CPU. So you won't be able to reach such heights as you were able or you would be able with i5 and i7K models. Um, however we go into that I'm going to do an extensive benchmarks in terms of uh, not overclocked and overclocked 3.70K and then stock version of this. I'm not going to be comparing to 3.70K because simply it's much more expensive uh, chip where this one is actually priced less than 3570k on Intel website. So that would be interesting to see in CPU bound applications whether this would perform better which I'm 99% sure it would. Another um, nice feature is that this CPU is actually consuming less power. Um, I, I'd suppose that's because it doesn't have an onboard GPU so it allows to consume less power and also therefore it would produce less heat. So really neat. Um, what else is there? ECC memory, I already spoke about that. There's no graphics on board. Yeah, that's about it. Uh, these are the differences. So a bit slower speed, no non-overclockable. 
Um, it has an ECC memory support if you're building a server, something like that, and has additional four threads, so eight threads in total, four physical cores, as in comparison to 3570K, and pricing is nearly identical. So let's get the box open. All right. Packaging seems very similar to the other Intel box CPUs. Yes, it is. So you have a basically booklet and you have a sticker, obviously sticker would say Xeon instead of i3, i5 or i7. You have a standard Intel cooler, I believe. Yes, it does look standard Intel cooler. Um, which actually, because it's non-overclockable and it produces less heat, there is more reasons to use this as opposed to aftermarket. However, I myself already have got this uh, Cooler Master Hyper 212 um, EVO. So I'll be using that and I'm going to show you results with that. That would be in the next video. Let's see. So that's the chip. Um, yeah, guys, I'm not actually even going to open the packaging just yet because there's nothing really that different. Actually, give me one second. I'm going to take the 3570K and show you the difference. All right, and I'm back. So as you see from outside, you probably couldn't even tell the difference really if not for the writings. Um, on my left, I have the i5 3570K, which is overclockable and four cores four threads and on the right I have Xeon clocked at nearly the same speed non overclockable four cores eight threads so let's take them out and see if we can spot some differences now because it doesn't have on one board um, GPU there might be some slight differences however as you see there is not um, obviously everything is based under this shroud and uh, I won't be removing it quite frankly but that's the unboxing and that's the comparison so as you see visually in terms of uh, some specifications it's quite identical and in terms of price it's quite identical to 3570k however uh, in my next video I'm going to do extensive benchmarks I'm going to compare them to CPUs because they're priced similarly and we'll see um, how do they perform. I will include a couple games, but not too many because, well, honestly, even if this CPU was faster in the games, you wouldn't see much, if any, difference because this one is already the king of gaming at the moment. So that's it for now. I hope you liked the unboxing. If you have any questions or comments, leave them at the comment section down below. And yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos to come. And thanks for watching. Have a nice day.